Hi everyone, this is Sonali. Thank you all for carving out some time for attending this uh, business webinar. The topic of today's session is five ways to double profits in your business. Also to all the attendees out there, please type in any questions you might have and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session. So I would now like to introduce our speaker. He's a certified business coach from Action Coach USA and a personality assessor through Psychometric certified by CB5 Pune. He works with ambitious and learning oriented business owners from various industries and helps them grow their business exponentially and make more profits. His ambition is to create a successful entrepreneur in every family that will enable India to be at the forefront of innovation and new technology. Please welcome Mr. Pashupati. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sonali, for that warm welcome. Thank you so much. And welcome to all the attendees here. Uh, we are in for a one hour of uh, deep business insights. Uh, and thank you for joining today's um, this webinar. Uh, before we begin, uh, I would like to know about all of you. So uh, please type in. Uh, your introduction, your name, which city are you from, uh, what's your company name, and what are the challenges you are facing at the moment. If you could just type here, uh, it'll be great. Okay, uh, thank you, Abhinav, for being here. Thank you, Shiv Shankar, from all the way from Hyderabad. I'm talking to you from uh, Kolkata at the moment. Profits are in pressure. Yeah, that's right. High operating cost. Others, please. Mm -hmm. Unstable fluctuating consumable cost. Right. That's great. Uh, welcome, Manoj. Welcome, Vipul. Welcome, Abhinav. The challenges are uh, reducing OPEX, definitely, and marketing. Right. So I'll just wait for a couple of more introductions and then we'll go ahead. Nitin from Mumbai is in the travel industry. Uh, that's at the moment one of the industries which is hugely impacted. Welcome, Bhanu. What do you do? Hmm. A operating cost, time management, yeah, these are the issues everyone is facing, especially the fixed cost in the business. Cognitive assessment, that's great. Right, I would request all of you to switch off your video. It will help the bandwidth because now uh, internet being, is being used everyone, almost by everyone in the country. So switching on video will help in saving the bandwidth. It will help in better transmission. The education sector, okay, scaling down the revenues, Neil. 
and brand awareness yeah that's right marketing lack of employee participation and operating cost uh, are the issues faced by people right if you see more or less um, uh, two three patterns come out trends one is the operating cost and uh, for most of the businesses it's sharp so uh, today we'll talk about that uh, i'll give you a couple of frameworks where you can look at your business from those two frameworks okay so going ahead i request all of you uh, to note these webinar guidelines uh, from which you will get the most bfos bfos is a term in action coach uh, where i'm from bfo means blinding flashes of the obvious which means the eureka moment the aha moment you will get during the webinar so please be in the moment means be mentally uh, mentally be here you know watch till the end because there are uh, insights that is that are going to come continuously obviously take notes uh, all of you are free to take notes participate you know uh, whenever i ask a question please participate your energy will feed off me so energy in the room is very important and definitely it's a one hour long webinar so if you want to grab a tea or coffee please do that right so these are the guidelines which if you follow will enable you to have a awesome webinar going forward over the next 60 minutes as i said uh, thank you for being here i'm sure you had an option of joining other webinars as well but uh, i'm grateful for you uh, grateful to you for attending this webinar and uh, my intention would be to give you uh, some insights that you can implement more importantly is in implement because uh, information is available everywhere in today's world the most important thing is to implement those learnings so please implement the learnings uh, right from the moment the webinar ends and we'll see you know improvement in your business Before I start, who am I? Why do I claim that I can help you in your business? Uh, as Sonali mentioned, I'm a business coach and a management consultant uh, with an MBA in marketing and international business, so over 25 years of experience. Out of that, the first 20 years, I was in a job. Uh, I was in a job working for large corporates in various functions in sales, marketing, HR, operations. Uh, and for the last five years, 2016 onwards, I've been a uh, business coach. And I can tell you that these five years have been superb compared to the first 20 years. I'm enjoying my life as an entrepreneur. And what I do these days, I help business owners and business leaders grow their, uh, grow their business, improve their cash flow, uh, implement processes, manuals that will enable the business to run on automatic mode without the owner being there on daily basis. Over the last five years, I've coached business owners from various industries like building material, pharma, retail, printing industry, uh, even service sector like architect, interior designers, uh, chartered accountants, to name a few. And my goal is to create a successful entrepreneur in every family, because as you know, India is the land of small and medium businesses. Uh, there are 50 million SME registrations in India. So even if you take about two to three uh, people per SME, you know, SMEs are contributing, or about 15 to 20 crore population of India is dependent upon SME. So SME is really the backbone of the country. So I'd like to contribute to that by helping entrepreneurs in the SME sector become successful in their own right. So when I mean, when I say success, what does success mean? And if you see this, okay, before I go into that, the icon on the right, if you see here, it says 17 week guarantee. This is the action coach guarantee that uh, whatever we coach, if the results don't come despite implementation, the coaching is always free. That is the universal guarantee which all action coaches across the world they give. Going forward, now as I say, as I said in the last slide, that my mission is to create successful entrepreneurs, which means uh, so I'll be more talking from business angle. Uh, so, what does a successful business mean? Successful entrepreneur should definitely have a successful business. So, what does a successful business mean? A successful business as per action coach definition as we define is a commercial profitable enterprise now, commercial obviously it has to be a commercial enterprise where uh, goods or services are given for a fee it has to be profitable obviously because otherwise it will not sustain in the long run 
it is definitely an enterprise. Enterprise is a place where many people work together. Uh, we can run our own as a self-employed if we are one, but if when our business grows, definitely we need to add more people. That time it becomes an enterprise. More importantly, so uh, if you introspect in your business at the moment, your business will be commercial, uh, to a large extent profitable, and many people would be working with you. Uh, but the final word that works without you, this is the critical aspect in a successful business. The business should run without the owner being there you know, on a daily basis, because as you say, the business owner should work on the business rather than in the business. On the business is all about the all about spending your time on the activities that will develop your business, that will increase your, expand your business, like networking, like expanding into other territories, recruitment, writing manuals and systems, which in a nutshell, which you do for once and the results will come all the time. So that is called working on the business and working in the business is all the transactional uh, aspects of the business, which is like you know, mm, looking after the logistics, uh, looking after the uh, debtors, creators, supply chain. So these are all uh, in the business. So the more time a business owner spends on, on the business, the more likely that the business will grow. Obviously, uh, before you start working on the business, you have to create systems in your business so that you are out of the business on a daily basis. So kindly note this definition. You can take a snapshot also. This is the, the ultimate a definition of a successful business if you have been able to uh, listen to me if you are able to hear me properly kindly write yes in your chat box so that it's easy for me to understand if you have any questions till now please uh, put your question before we move ahead thank you so much i think everybody is able to hear which means the uh, internet connection is good so far so good All right Going forward, so this was the definition. As you know, this is these are hard times. Uh, these are times where none could predict. Nobody could predict. Even uh, a month back, you know, I was in uh, I was uh, in Delhi in February for one full month doing a lot of coaching. So I could never predict, nor could anybody else, that March would be like this, and again April. But even in this scenario. We are the business owners. We are the uh, the buck stops with us. You know, everybody is looking to us, which means our uh, our vendors, our staff, everybody is looking to us as a business owner. Uh, so it is up to us that you know, even during these times, we have to keep our chin up because it is our business. It is dependent upon us how we react, how we respond to the situation it is upon us whether we want to make our business only like a bonsai or we want to grow it as a big bang entry so as an owner what should we do we are going to discuss these in the next slides especially from sales and marketing angle uh, as you know business has many aspects many functions there are many functions in a business uh, so i'll type the functions here sales marketing finance hr operations, management, and innovation. So these are what we call usually the seven aspects of a business, right? Because if a, uh, the, if the business can grow or the business can do well only as long as all these seven functions of the business working tandem, right? As we say that the weakest uh, link in the whole chain can collapse the chain. So we have to see our business from all these seven angles. So right from when the webinar ends, you can introspect that uh, are you equally strong in all these aspects. Some of these we are going to discuss today, primarily sales and marketing, because these are the two most important aspects in any business. Uh, because the sales drives the profit, drives it brings in the money. So as long as we are doing sales and marketing right, to a large extent, all the other functions will fall in place because we will have the resources to invest in the right people, right technology, you know, uh, right new products. So sales and marketing, I would say, are the two essential aspects of any business. So in today's times, when everything is at a standstill, the most important thing is to manage ourselves as a business owner, because as I said, everybody is looking to us. So, uh, so the essential thing is to not to get uh, hassled, not to lose our cool, and 
do a proper management. So management can be primarily have divided management into three aspects. One is managing yourself. The second is managing the team. And third is managing finance, business finance, uh, which we'll talk in detail. So quickly on managing yourself, uh, I've written three H. Uh, primarily it means the three H of home, health, and hobby. So as we are in the home for the last two weeks and another one week to go, so it is very important that we take our care of our health. So eat healthy food, do exercise. I'm sure you would have heard uh, these things in many webinars as of now. So I'm just briefly touching upon them. Uh, health and then definitely your uh, home, take care of the family. Family is looking up to you as you are the, many of you are the uh, elders in your family. So family is looking up to you. And third is the hobby. If you had any hobby which you could not Hello, sir. We can't hear you. Hello. Yeah, Sonali, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. But your oh, did I get lost in between? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry for and that. Your screen is not visible as well. Yeah, just a moment. I'll just uh, share yeah. it again. Yeah, so 3H, 3H is your health, your home, your hobby, right? Take care of these. Uh, then we move on to the team. Team is definitely your uh, people, those who work for you, uh, not only your uh, those who work for you at in business, even for in a home, there'll be your mates, your other people, your driver. So take care of them, uh, be cool. The most important thing is to be transparent, uh, talk to them, communicate with them, uh, Communicate with them transparently, you know, be honest with them, the state of the business, the what you are going through, how you are planning to overcome uh, these challenges, be transparent, transparent with them. I think this is the most important need as a business owner uh, that is being transparent. And finance, uh, of course, the team, uh, your business finance, we'll go into detail about that, uh, how to go about looking at your finance, right? So fortunately in business, uh, it's not important to do extraordinary things. It is just uh, enough to do ordinary things in an extraordinary way. That is what uh, the great investor Warren Buffett has told. And uh, I follow this to a strict T. Ordinary things, if you improve every day, these bring passive results. So, so I'm going to, so going by this, inspired by this, uh, I'll discuss some very easy to implement practical framework, which you can apply in your business, which you can introspect and apply in your business. So, as I said, business has uh, seven angles, uh, seven functions, which were sales, marketing, finance, HR, operations, leadership, and innovation. So uh, these are the other way, there's another dimension to look at. These are the seven P's in the business. Right? Your product, your price, promotion, place, people, process, and proof, which is the physical evidence. These seven drive your sales and marketing, which are primarily important for the business. But now we need to add one more P because uh, during these uh, hard times, uh, which nobody could predict. So there's another P in the whole thing, which is the pivot. Pivot, as you know, pivot means to turn, to it can be a small turn, it can be a full turn, it can be a U-turn, depending upon your business. The time has come to look at your business from 
a little bit of a different angle. So uh, that's the pivot angle, the eighth P in the business or in the system that we need to introduce at this moment. The good thing about this eighth P is that we can apply this eighth P in all these uh, original seven P's. Yeah. For example, in uh, product. In product, uh, you may have many product lines, many products. So like uh, when I was, uh, when I coach a pharma client, they have about 7,000 SKUs in their lineup. So we, in the product, we need to look at each and every SKU, uh, whether we can give a, a different a twist to it. Twist in the sense that can we uh, can we make some new offer? Can we good, uh, give some new offer which can be taken by the client? You know, uh, what are the uh, and in any business, 80% of the business is contributed by 20% of the products. That is the 80-20 rule. It, it is applicable in our life. It is applicable in business also. 80% of the uh, 80 percent of the business will be given by 20% of your consumer. 80% of your business will be given by 20% of your products, more or less, plus minus maybe 5%. But this is what it is. So look at the products that contribute 80% to your business and see what you can do to better uh, to flog them better, flog them in the better in the sense that how you can make those products even more attractive in these new times. Uh, uh, in these times because these products have helped you in the past sustain your business and these products are again going to uh, Help you in these times now the time is not this is not the time to Do something new. I mean no new strategy nothing no new thinking nothing just focus on your old things which have done Well, which have gone well with a new twist. That is all the ask of this day. So look at your products uh, like somebody was in education sector, uh, education sector, uh, I think Bhanu, she said uh, he was in uh, education sector. So look at the products which will sell, uh, you know, maybe more attractive to the consumer, add more features, uh, no frill product. If you if you if any of your product can be reduced to a no frill one, the basic product level, you know, do that so that uh, it is easy for the consumer to buy the product when things when after this lockdown is over. So look at that from the product angle uh, 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 create new combinations new offers uh, in uh, in my pharma client when i was sitting with my uh, or talking to my pharma client uh, over the phone so we made a list of uh, what we can give uh, uh, the medicines are okay some medicines uh, the chronic disease medicines they are uh, regular sellers but the other medicines uh, especially the uh, the otc products how we can you know, give them as an offer so we worked out something. So similarly, for your business, also see what combinations can you give for your product. Coming to price again, uh, again look at from that angle which are the products uh, or uh, which are the price points. Price points which are giving you eighty percent of the turnover. Look at the margins here in price. Uh, of course, price is related to margin and cost. So it is very important to look at the COGS, which is the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold is the uh, the cost of your product. If you are trading, the price at which you are buying from the supplier. If you are manufacturing, uh, the manufacturing cost of your product. This is called COGS. So look at your COGS again. Renegotiate with the supplier because he's also looking at business. Uh, he wants business now. So it is a very good time to renegotiate the prices with him. If you are able to uh, guarantee some business for him, definitely he is willing to. He will be willing to look at a different price, a better price for you. So this is where the costs come. Again, uh, like many said, operational costs. Uh, you know, look at your operational costs, the cost which you can cut down. Look at your fixed cost. Can you uh, shrink your, uh, can you reduce your fixed cost? Uh -huh. Look at this uh, rent, look at the, can you, uh, for some extent, for, for some period, can you look at reducing your rent cost? Can you uh, renegotiate with your landlord? And take a deferment of the rent. Uh, similarly, on your salaries, can you talk to your employees? Again, communication uh, becomes very important here. You know, can you uh, look at salaries if you can defer, or uh, uh, if you have a mix of fixed and variable salary or the incentives? You know, can you look at uh, using the incentives or stopping the incentives at the moment? Uh, I was talking to my earlier employer, uh, which is a, a global uh, organization, which is there in 80 countries across the world. Even that organization has stopped all its promotions, all its uh, uh, incentives for the time being, for this whole year. 2020, they've already announced that 
there will be no promotion in the business and there will be no incentives so look at um, things from this angle talk to your uh, people i think communication will be the biggest thing so price is all about looking at your uh, top line as well as your cost part so obviously top line uh, may be difficult to increase the price at the moment so what you have to do is look at your cost and uh, save on the cost so that your margin uh, becomes better also in the product list if you have a large product list look at the products which give you a better margin so uh, uh, make good offers around those product which you if you those sell well you can get good margin right the third p is the promotion promotion means advertising uh, marketing right now many of my clients have asked me now that what to do shall i stop marketing uh, so my answer to them is no don't stop marketing in fact this is the right time to continue marketing because uh, one is the marketing costs have come down uh, if you are in online advertising uh, i'm sure you would have noticed that uh, the popular platforms like facebook instagram their costs have come down even uh, i have realized in my own campaigns uh, what the if i spend 100 rupees on you i reached maybe uh, 300 people now uh, in the same 100 rupees i am able to reach 600 people or 700 people even double so the definitely the marketing costs have come down online cost and if you are in offline uh, uh, marketing oriented activities then definitely look at your uh, talk to your vendors and uh, renegotiate i'm sure they will look at it but the the need of the r is not to cut down on promotion uh, advertisement or marketing but to keep at it and in some cases uh, look at going into new new uh, new avenues like new markets where you are not uh, present there suppose you are in hyderabad today or calcutta today and if you are not working in other cities now is the right time to go into those cities because your marketing cost is less and you need at this moment you need you can't have uh, you know the same set of customers to some extent beyond a point you need new customers also so marketing can help you reach those customers new customers in your target segment but the the moot point the important point here is to select the target audience well because marketing can go wrong if you are target to the wrong audience so test and measure in action coach we always say test and measure test and measure means uh, first you pilot something do marketing uh, if you are doing in a new area uh, do a pilot you run it for some time and if it works well then increase your investment in that otherwise uh, come back draw back so that is called test and measure in our action coach system we we um, always suggest our clients to do a lot of test and measuring in all aspects not only in promotion even in a product in your pricing do a pilot if it works well then go whole hog expand it if it doesn't work just Again, come back and redo it. We uh, fine-tune your strategy. Place by place, I mean the the distribution, right? Distribution is the the channel where your product will reach the end user. So, if you are a manufacturer and you have your distributors and stockists in place, so probably this is the right time to look at new avenues. New avenues means uh, online. If your business is not online today, uh, even if you are in the traditional uh, brick and mortar business you know, like garments or uh, garment if you have a garment store uh, or uh, some other traditional store it is the right time to go online and if you are already in the online look at some other ways of uh, avenue in online uh, now um, the one good way which i am following is affiliate affiliate uh, marketing you know so a lot of uh, affiliate platforms are there where, wherein i have tied up with and they are now promoting my business so this is uh, so affiliate i never did before covid so this is one new channel which i have now opened up for my business so look at uh, your uh, distribution channel how your products reach your consumer and there will definitely be one or two new ways of reaching the consumers again right the fifth p what we talk about is the people the human resource in your company look at the people you know is the right time to uh, uh, for the last two weeks we have been at home and another one week to go so it is the right time to assess your people right uh, in action coach we say that there are uh, there are four kinds of people that work in an organization uh, one of the star workers the work horses the problem child and the uh, the dead wood i'll write for you here in the chat
So four types, star, stars, work horses, problem child, and Deadwood. Right? So look at, uh, it's a very simple, I'm suggesting a very simple way to uh, measure your the performance of your staff, which is expectation versus delivered. In the last financial year, uh, 1920, so what was your expectation from the staff and and how much did they deliver compared to the expectation? So very simple uh, uh, analysis. You have to actually write it down. Don't do it in your uh, mind or verbally. Write it down. Put a paper on the left side. You write what, are, what were the expectations from your staff, from that particular staff. Even it can be uh, as junior a guy as a peon and office boy in your company and as senior as a sales head of your company. So write down the expectations on the left side and vis-a-vis -vis on the right side, do a comparison of the delivery. Did they deliver or not? So basis this, you can uh, segregate your people on the basis on these four parameters, which are stars, workhouses, problem child, and dead world. Stars are those who are, uh, you know, their skill is also high and their attitude is also positive. So these are all as business owners, as business leaders, we would want most of our employees to be in star category. Workhouses are those who are good in skill, but they have they don't have such a good attitude. Probably, uh, sorry, oh, it's I talk the reverse. Workhouses are those whose skills are a little less, but they have a very positive attitude. Whatever work you give them, they are able to complete it. They never say no, right? They always have a positive attitude, which uh, reflects in the company, which permeates in the organization. Problem child are those whose skills are very high, but they don't have a positive attitude. And Deadwood are those who don't have skills and the uh, and the attitude is also not positive. So obviously, uh, the the less number of Deadwood that you have in an organization, it's better for you. And an organization have more should have more stars and more workhorses. So look at your people from these four angles, you know, and see if there is a workhorse in an organization, how you can uh, upgrade that work uh, upgrade that staff to a star. If you have a problem child in organization, how you can upgrade that to a star? Because problem child, uh, okay, okay, stars, star workhorses, problem child, and then win, right? So, so the more we have workhorses in organization, the more we have stars in the organization, our organization will be more effective. It will run more uh, smoothly. Our profits will be high because productivity will go up. So look at the people from these angle and analyze them. And then accordingly, you can, if you need to uh, switch the job roles, like if you have, if you are running an organization uh, which has offices in a few places, you, know, you have uh, territories. So probably you can, uh, pull out people from a low performing territory to a high performing territory. This is the need of the hour. Reshuffle your people, we look at your people from their skill perspective, from their attitude perspective, and then uh, work accordingly. Right? So we have covered product, price, promotion, place, and people. The next one is the process. Right? Process is, is one of the most important pieces in the whole thing. It is all about the operations part of a business. You know, operations means operations is all about delivering consistent experience to the consumer. It is not about just uh, delivering good experience to the consumer once or twice. It is delivering consistent experience to the consumer. That is the hallmark of a good process or good system in the organization. So look at the processes in the, your organization. If there are any wastages there, if there are any duplication of work, if the repetitive work is going on, uh, look at that. In process, look at the supply chain. In many organizations, which where I've coached, you know, uh, what I've seen is the, the supply chain parameter. Supply chain is always one area where a uh, lot of things can be done, especially in the inventory management. If you are in a business where uh, you need to carry inventory, uh, look at your inventory again, because inventory and how to measure inventory, that is in number of days of sales. If there's a parameter called daily sales inventory which means that how many days of your sales is locked in inventory because inventory is your current asset. It can be liquidated. It can be liquidated easily. 
so the more uh, the higher inventory you have the larger portion of your working capital is blocked in uh, inventory which means that the ability to rotate the capital the working capital will be less the cash cycle the cash conversion cycle will be less right so look at your inventory look at your debtors in the cash part of the process the other part is uh, the the wastage and the any repetitive work which you are doing so how to improve the process make a workflow now you are at home you'll have some time with you uh, and you can also involve your team in it make a workflow a work chart for a Gantt chart for every function of your business right break down the functions in small small things suppose from your lead generation to sales the closure of sales there will be n number of activities in that so break down these activities into small small portions and write down a workflow for that for example uh, if you are doing a lead generation activity if you so is there a script for it right because if you have 10 people in the organization uh, 10 salesmen in the organization they may be talking separately in different language to your consumers to the prospects so do you have a script where everybody will be talking in the same language so writing script is again a part of a system because you create that system once you write that script once and it will be applicable you know at many places in many times so you do the work once you get the result many times so any anything uh, process and systems is all about doing things once and getting the benefit out of that for long time it's the leverage doing things more with less as we say now those leveraging your resources doing once and getting benefit multiple times that is all about creating systems the the last the last p the last of the original seven p's is the physical evidence the proof the proof because today as we know to enable sale or to enable business one must your prospect or the consumer must as we say like you trust you and they must need your product or service so like trust and need these are the three parameters you should look at uh, before making a sale because only when you uh, you know comply with all the three when all the three are satisfied then the sale will happen uh, like means like as an individual like pertains to liking you or your team member as an individual yeah it is like trust and need so the customer or the prospect must like you as an individual trust is about your product right so for example if the if the customer or the prospect likes you as a individual but he doesn't have belief in your product then the sale will not happen for the another again if they like you and they trust your product but if they don't need that product at the moment then they will not engage in any sale they will not buy the product that time so as a good uh, good salesman always creates a need also so once you have established your like and you have established your trust then uh, then as a good salesman you must create need for that product or service so that it sells because the first two part which are the more difficult part like and trust that has already been taken care of so need is the next one right so this physical evidence is more about creating trust right so how do you create trust there are many ways of creating trust but the more the best way is to take feedback from your existing customers take testimonials in our business if you go to my uh, uh, social platform social media platforms if you go to my business uh, if you go to my uh, facebook page which is uh, business coach pashupati kundu you'll see quite a few videos there of my clients they have spoken about me of my work and how my work has benefited them so make it a uh, you know one of your mandatory uh, things with you and your team to collect testimonials from your clients right if if you are in b2b business it is all the more important if you are in uh, non impulsive purchase products you know it is all the more important that you collect testimonials because if you are in b2b business if you are in products which have a long uh, gestation period between lead and sale then it's very important to create trust because that trust will uh, reduce that cycle selling cycle 
because uh, if you are able to create that trust, they may not be looking at other <coughs> your competitors. So please create testimonials. It can be a written testimonial. It can be your, uh, but these days, <coughs> especially video testimonials work a lot. So uh, take videos from your customer. It should be small ones up to one minute between 20 seconds to 45 seconds and one minute at the max. So take these kinds of uh, these kind of videos from your customer testimonials and put it on your uh, website or your other uh, social media platform. If you have a, a written one on the letterhead of the organization, it's also good. So that also you can post on your uh, this thing on your website or any other way you are doing marketing in your collaterals or uh, anywhere. You know, because in these uh, in these hard times where everybody is. Uh, jostling for business. I would use jostle. Everybody's competing for the same pie, which has also shrunk. The pie has also shrunk, and everybody's competing. Creating this trust and your likeness will enable to enable you to have a competitive advantage vis-a-vis uh, -vis your competitors. So please take note of this. You can take a snapshot also of this. Moving ahead. So this was one framework. This seven seven P framework. I say. Uh, in management, it's called the 7P framework. Look at your business from all these seven P's and see where you can improve, where you can do a pivot. It uh, ranging from small changes, small improvements to large ones, right? So going ahead, we've already covered about 40 minutes. I think I'll take a uh, little bit extra time with your permission. So moving ahead. So so far so good. Are you enjoying? Is it adding value to you? Please type uh, yes if it is adding value. It will give me uh, inspiration. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, look, thank you so much. <clears throat> so let us move on to another uh, framework, right? So this is one framework we spoke about, and we have one more framework that will uh, directly help you increase your sales. You know? Look at the uh, framework again uh, very seriously be in the moment and we go ahead right so in any business so can you say uh, where does the uh, what is your ultimate goal in any business when you are in your business eighth p is the pivot uh, the pivot is basically the tactical measures which you should take during this time and that eighth p you can apply in all the previous seven original P's, whether it be product, whether it be price, whether it be promotion or your proof uh, or your distribution strategy, which is your place. You look at the, all the seven P's from uh, uh, doing something tactical. Don't do big changes, do minor changes. These minor changes, these minor uh, turns in your strategy, these are called pivot. Right? I hope it's clear. Right. So can you tell me what is in business? What do you want most? What is your number one goal in business? Why are you doing business? Can you type it? Right. To reach the target customer. Absolutely correct. Profit. Exactly. That's one more profit. Retain customers. Yeah, we'll be talking about that. Profit. Definitely profit. Right. Right. So uh, profit growth. Yeah, definitely goodwill. Uh, exactly. So please collect testimonials that will increase goodwill. That will help you to scale up as well at a low cost, right? So the number one goal is of course uh, profit. So profit will come from sales, and sales will give you profit. So in any business, whether you are in product business, whether in service business, uh, whether in insurance, whether you are in security, whether you are in education. These are the three goals of any business, right? Customers, we want more customers. We want the customers uh, will give us more sales and from sales will derive profit, right? So these are the any objectives of any business. This is objective for even my business as well. But these are the output. So obviously in business or to get some output, we need to focus on the inputs. So let us see what are the inputs. What are the inputs we need to give so that we are achieved, we are able to achieve these key goals of maximum customers, maximum sales and maximum profit, right? So these inputs are called the levers in the business because levers like in car, we have gears, we have levers. So if you increase your lever, 
you know, go, you go from first gear to fourth gear, your speed of the car increases. Similarly, if you work upon these levers of your business, uh, your business will improve. So, and I'll be talking about five levers. Just, just focus on these five levers. There is no sixth lever in any business in the world. Uh, these are the five levers that can apply, that can be applicable for all any kind of business that you do. Even if you have multiple businesses, you can apply these five levers in all your business. So, so what can be the first lever? What is the starting step? What is the first step of any business? Can you type? What is the first step of any business? Where do we start from? To get customers, where do we start from? Yeah, planning is one. Awareness, research, yeah, very good. Yeah, after research, we arrive at target audience, which is our target audience. So the first lever is the lead generation. Do you agree? The first lever is the lead generation because if we don't do activities to generate lead, then how will we get customers? So there are, uh, yeah, of course, through promotions. Promotion is the input, uh, and from that input, we get leads. So there are many ways of getting leads. You know, leads uh, you can advertise in the newspaper, you can advertise online, you can employ salespeople who will go out for you in the market and generate leads for you, right? So in Action Coach, we have 84 ways of generating leads. Of course, all the 84 may not be applicable for all the business. So you need to see uh, what kind of lead generation activities will work for you, right? So, so what can be the second step? Of course, if you get 100 leads, suppose we do an activity, marketing activity, and we get 100 leads. Uh, ideally, as a business owner, we want that all the 100 leads should convert into customers. But that doesn't happen. Does it happen? Do you get 100% leads converted into your consumers, in your customers? Do everybody buy from you, those who come to buy from you? Right? In most of the business, it doesn't happen. If, if you are having 100% uh, uh, turnover or 100% conversion from lead to customers, it's very good. But I have seen that practically that is, uh, that's not happening. Most of the businesses that have a very uh, less than 50% conversion ratio. So the second lever is the conversion ratio. Right, conversion ratio. For example, uh, if you have 100 leads today and your conversion ratio in the business is 25%, then your number of customers will be 25. Right? So, so the first thing is to start measuring. Like how many leads are you getting? Most of the businesses you know, where I uh, interact with, uh, many of them say that uh, when I ask them how many leads you got this month, if it's a retail business, they'll say, okay, uh, 100 I got this month. So when I ask them the next question, have you measured it or is it just an intuition or just a guess estimate? Uh, so many of them say that, no, I have not measured it. It's just an assumption. So my request to all of you would be to start measuring your leads because as in Action Coach, we say, if you have to improve something, you have to start measuring it. What gets measured? gets managed what gets managed gets better right so if you have to improve anything either in your business or in anything suppose you have to if i have to lose weight then i need to know where i'm standing today if i'm at 75 kilo today and if i need to uh, reduce five kilos then i need to know that i am 75 today otherwise how will you start so it is very important to start measuring. If you're not measuring your number of leads that come to you every month or in a quarter or in a year, please start measuring it. Otherwise you'll not be able to know which activity of yours, if you're doing three activities for lead generation, if you're doing your online campaign, if you're talking to your, if you're uh, getting referrals from your old uh, clients, if you are uh, part of any networking organization like BNI or any other organization, how will you know that which lead generation activity is working for you? So please start measuring it. The next one is conversion. Unless your um, uh, conversion is upwards of 30%, there's a lot of activity to be done in conversion. So again, please start measuring conversion because uh, this is again a very important lead. Uh, I'll come to that, that how to increase conversion, but this is one lever. First, let's talk about the levers. So, so the third lever is your average ticket rate because when your customers come, if you have 100 leads and 25% conversion, so 25 customers will come to you. 
So 25 customers means they will do something. They will, somebody will buy goods worth one lakh rupees. Somebody will buy goods worth fifty thousand rupees. Somebody will buy ten thousand rupees worth of product. So you average out your invoice rate, your ticket rate. And uh, so how do you do that? You calculate your monthly turnover or your quarterly turnover and divide by your number of customers or number of invoices made. So that will give you an average ticket rate. And this is again an important uh, lever of your business because. With the same number of customers, if you are able to increase your ticket size, your ticket rate, your business will improve. The next lever is your number of transactions. Number of transactions means how many repeat customers do you have? Especially, it is extremely relevant in today's time where uh, you know uh, the somebody who has already bought from you, who is your customer, is experienced your product or service, he is more likely to engage with you. He would also not like to experiment and go to new people, and you would also not like to uh, look at new consumers because, as we say in business, it is seven times more expensive to get a new customer than retain an old one. Especially in these times when we are looking at cutting down cost, you know, it is very important to to take care of your existing customers, take care of your old customers, talk to your old customers who have not come back in a while, somebody who has uh, you know who used to buy from you. Two years before, but last two years he has not come back to you. Start communicating with him. Reach out to him because this will improve your number of transactions from your existing clients, right? So these are the uh, so if you have 25 customers and let's say your average ticket rate is thousand, so 25 thousand and into two. Let's say your average transaction is two. So 25 customers, 25 customers. Thousand is your uh, average ticket size, and twice they buy from you in a given period. It can be depending upon your business. It can be one year. It can be one quarter. If it's a consumer durable, maybe a longer period. Let's say they buy from you twice. So your average, uh, so your sales will be customer times your average ticket rate times your number of transaction, right? So it will be fifty k. So 50k your sales. So from sales to profit, you have to look at the the last lever, which is your margin, right? Because your 50k is your revenue. It's not the profit. You have to reduce your expenses, reduce your cogs. Cost cogs is as I uh, discussed before. Cost of goods sold, right? So from your sales, if you reduce margin, then you come to your profit. So now, how to uh, look at these levers? So now you know that these are the only five levers in the business, and if you work upon these levers gradually, you will be able to improve your overall goal, which is the profit, right? So look at your business. What are you doing today to generate your lead, and how you can improve upon that? You know, what are the measures you can do? You can implement to increase your lead. How? Uh, and in lead generation, since it is related to your marketing activity, uh, your team. So look at which uh, which of your staff member is um, uh, you know uh, generating more leads. His productivity is more. Can you give him more training, better training, better uh, some amount of uh, better incentive to increase the leads for you because he's a good performer. If you are advertising in online channel, uh, which platform is working for you? Whether it's SEO or Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, which platform is working for you? So that you can uh, invest more in that platform and take out money from the other platforms. So it is all about measuring, and looking into the details. Because as you say, God is in detail. So look at your lead generation from that angle. Look at the conversion. If your conversion at X percentage, how you can increase conversion? You know, because you have generated a lead, you have already invested in your marketing. So customer, the prospect has come to you, and if he's not buying, so there is something definitely wrong in you rather than the consumer, because consumer has come to buy from you. So look at the conversion. So whether you have the right product for him. He's looking at something, and you don't have that product, or the price point is not matching, uh, or uh, you know your salespeople are not trained enough to ask good questions to find out their need. So these are the some of the parameters where you can increase conversion. Training is one big area where if you focus upon your conversion ratio will go up, especially if your trainer, if your uh, sales is happening through your team members. And of course, if you are also involved in selling, so look at your own uh, training, your own learning. Can you increase it and 
by which your conversion can go up. Average ticket rate is again one thing. Uh, this is a, the best example is the quick service restaurants. If you go to McDonald's or Domino's, they always, even if you ask for a burger, they will try to add on more. So, sir, do you want a meal with it? Do you want soft drink with it? Do you want anything else? What are they trying to do? They know that the customer is already here and is willing to spend, let's say, 100 rupees. If if my by my questions, my you know uh, proactive nature, if I'm able to increase that 100 to 120, my business will go up by 20 percent with the same number of customers, right? So so many a time, what I uh, you know what I gather from my clients is that uh, we are under the impression that our business will grow if only a number of customers grow. It's not that. If you see at uh, these levers, if you even if you keep your number of customers same, still you can grow your sales, still you can grow your profit through focusing on your average ticket rate, number of transactions. So look at your business where you can average, you, you can increase your average ticket rate. For example, can you give a combo offer? You know, if you are giving a selling product, can there be a service to it? For example, if you are in a consumer durable business, if you are in air conditioning business, so if the buyer, the person is going to buy an AC from you, can you give an AMC uh, an offer of an AMC at one year AMC. It's an X price, but today you are buying the AC from us. So there is a offer on AMC. So can you combine that? So these are some of the ideas where you can see whether you can offer another product with it at a lower cost or you can add some service to it also. You know? So your average ticket rate goes up like that. Number of transactions, it is uh, more applicable for retail clients where the uh, uh, for the retail businesses where uh, the the purchase rates are higher. The number of times you purchase are higher. For example, if I'm in a gift business, uh, so usually what happens is people buy gifts 10 to 12 times in a year minimum. You know, for birthday, for weddings, and uh, for anniversaries. For so many occasions, we buy gift. But if I'm a gift manufacturer, a gift seller, or a gift manufacturer, I'll say that okay, I'll measure my customer frequency and say that, okay, this customer is coming only twice to me in a year but in a year he buys gift at least 10 times so which means that eight eight times he's going to somebody else only twice he's coming to me if i am able to increase my uh, business with him the number of transactions from two to even three you know, and if i'm able to do with half of my customers then imagine your business will go up by 25 percent your sales will go up by 25 percent so just by focusing on number of transactions and how to increase the frequency and how they will interact with you more. This will also help when they are referring your product to somebody else, when they are buying new stuff with you, okay? So see in your business where you can increase your number of transactions. And lastly, the margin where like all of you, many of you spoke about your operation costs. So this is where you have to look at your margins, where you can cut down on your fixed cost. Uh, margins can both be at the top line level and as well as the cost level. Top line level means look at your products. This, this margin is I'm talking of your business as a whole. So the average margin in your business. So if you have, let's say 10 products in your business, so not all the products will give you equal margin. Some will have higher margin, some will have lower margin. So focus on the products which will give you higher margin. You know, <clears throat> Look at training your people on selling those higher margin products. Look at incentivizing your people. Look at uh, campaigning, uh, doing the promotions around those products will give higher margin. This way, your average margin of your product will go up. All right. <clears throat> See this. Uh, now I'll show you a calculation on how these five levers can help you grow your business. Right. Let me just go uh, to an Excel sheet. Yeah, so can you see all of you see this Excel sheet? Can you just type your responses? If you are able to see, please write yes. If not, please write no. So let's do a real life example. If someone is interested, we can do the uh, we can do a real life case for you. So who's interested to give his data here? and we'll do the real life analysis for him. 
anybody anybody who wants to you know uh, calculate basis these levers we can take your data and look at how we can go yeah okay let's go ahead bhanu uh, how many leads you you get in a month or in a quarter let's say how many leads you get a quarter okay so even uh, okay around 80 leads right uh, so this is applicable even if your business is old or new it doesn't matter because the levers are uniform levers are applicable for all business whether you are a startup or you are in business for a uh, you know, couple of generations still these levers will be applicable for you so out of these 80 leads uh, how many could you convert 28 was a conversion okay so about 35 percent is your conversion ratio right so first of all uh, did you measure your leads like whether really 80 or it's around 80 very good so if others are listening to this or looking at this uh Manu is measuring the leads so it's very good uh, for others if you don't have a lead management system please devise a system or devise a process for it and capture your leads in documented form not the lead should not be in uh, in your verbal uh, in your head or in a you know somewhere in your phone it should be documented properly in your excel file or any uh, software if you are running any software there are so many crms in the market today so if your business if your business is big enough for that you can uh, install a crm otherwise even an excel sheet is fine so what is the average ticket size uh, Bhanu? yeah that's right zoho is a very good crm I would suggest others to use also and Zoho is free now and they are giving uh, many new uh, features also free for the next three months. So what is your average ticket size? What is the cost of it? Okay, 3000. Right. And uh, so, so uh, if they have bought one product from you, uh, usually uh, what is the time period in which they come back to you again? Let's say in uh, six months, how many times do you expect suppose they have taken from for their one child so if they have two children in the family so would they come back to you again yeah right so let's say in a given quarter they are happy with your product and if there are two kids in the family uh, they come to you twice right yeah so it doesn't matter it for the same kid it can be two years but uh, if there are more opportunities from that family that can also be counted as number of times in a given period because they are coming back to you and giving you repeat business so that can also be called uh, that can be also be included in lever number four right so if you see that uh, if you have 28 clients and each client give you three thousand bucks and in a quarter or in a six month period they came to you twice you know so the revenue will be one lakh sixty eight thousand right and if you want to disclose your margin it's fine otherwise i can give uh, an approximation here uh, okay let's go by an approximation so let's say your business gives you 30 percent margin right so so the profit for you in that quarter will be fifty thousand rupees right others please note this is the calculation where you should also look at your business and now another the interesting thing is let us look at how we can grow right so suppose uh, bhanu i give you a task of growing your leads by 15 percent so what are the activities will you do and give me some cost effective activities which will not cost you so much i want to increase your leads from 80 to 92 that's 15 percent is 15 percent doable for others i'm just talking about a very small percentage 15 others please respond if is 15 percent doable 15 percent enhancement in lead generation you know many of you are in uh, networking platforms work that platform more for better uh, leads you know more leads look at your existing clients ask them to give uh, you leads 
work upon your testimonials more put the put your testimonials on your uh, platform social media platform or in a website that will give you more leads right so these are the ways you can increase your leads conversion ratio bhanu how will you increase your conversion ratio from 35% uh, if you increase by 15% it will go to 40% so so every 100 leads that you generate 40% people will buy from you right so give me some ideas bhanu how will you increase your conversion ratio Yeah, educating more prior to assessment discounts, maybe training your people better, you know, having more products in your kitty. Having more products, if you have only limited products, maybe have more educational systems. If you are, uh, if you are, uh, you know, not making your own content, probably you can tie up with other people. Uh, you can sell their uh, products as well. So these are other ways of increasing your product uh, portfolio wherein your conversion ratio will go up probably look at other markets you know, uh, where you are currently not there so uh, to increase your conversion so that will increase your uh, yeah conversion ratio now the third is the how to increase your average ticket size currently you are selling uh, products worth 3000 is your average now your next target is to sell around three and a half thousand right so what will you do to increase your uh, average ticket size yeah so so uh, look at your sales process again look at your sales scripts you know as i said earlier it's like trust and need probably if you are able to generate a lead for you uh, uh, if you are able to uh, generate that need better for the client if you are able to convince that client that the product is required for the kid you know if you have more testimonial again if you see uh, the levers are you know work for each other also like if you collect a testimonial it will increase your conversion it will increase your uh, average ticket rate also because you don't have to give discount right so these are some of the ways others also look at your business and see where you can look at uh, increase your average ticket rate all right so let's go to the others uh, the last uh, the fourth level which is your um, your repeat the frequency of coming back again right so for an average it uh, it should go up to 2.3 which means that in your business you know, uh, probably the customer will give more referral uh, the customer once satisfied with for his children uh, he will talk to his neighbors he'll talk to his friends so that the neighbors also come to you right so yeah that is because uh, referrals are the best in terms of conversion they'll give you the maximum conversion so and this is the right time to use referrals to maximum because reference do not cost they the, it is one of the most cost effective cost effective ways of generating leads generating uh, increasing your conversion increasing your average ticket price so all the levers will get impacted by your references by your testimonials right next we come to the margin because a little bit we are running short of time so margin how will you increase margin suppose you are at x margin today 30 percent and you will want to increase it by 15 percent right again <clears throat> by selling uh, products which give you better margin selling high value products giving lower discounts because you are able to uh, generate need for the product right so these are the ways where you can increase margin train your people better incentivize your uh, uh, the best salesmen of your business so that they sell more right so th these are the ways you can increase margin so you see uh, so what did we do we didn't do anything drastic it was not again it's uh, an example of pivoting a very small change in your each lever just by 15 percent in your uh, each of the levers and you see your business has uh, your number of customers have gone up by 32 percent your uh, revenue has gone up by 75 percent and your uh, revenue and your profit has gone up by 100 percent which means earlier you had a 50,000 profit and it has gone up to one lakh so my idea was to give you a framework to think and how I can increase my profit. So all the for the others who are there in the uh, webinar still, 
for them, I would say that look at your business from these two framework, the seven free framework and the and the five levers framework. This will help you grow your business. Uh, this is high time because every uh, now we are at home. Uh, we have enough time to introspect. We have enough time to analyze, to plan. And as business owners, this is our most important activity to plan and predict so that our uh, team, you know, when uh, they start again selling after the things uh, go back after lockdown period, they are ready. So you give them strategy, you give them the tactics. Okay, focus on these only, focus on product or focus on the new channel or focus on the conversion, right? So we, uh, if you see, so everything is dependent upon how you measure it and how good you plan it. So my intention in this webinar was to give you to a framework by which you can look at things in a proper shape, just not by uh, going here and there. Uh, restrict yourself to these two frameworks and then, uh, you know, start analyzing your business and increase your business. Right, so so did it add value to you? Please type in the chat box if you feel that these five levers can increase a business. Please write yes in the chat box. Uh, if you got a good framework to analyze your business and uh, look at business from this perspective. Uh, okay, I'll show the Excel once again. Uh, we are uh, running a little bit behind time, but uh, doesn't matter. I will show it again because this is very important for you to understand clearly. So the five levers are again leads, your conversion ratio, your average ticket size, uh, the frequency of repeat purchases, which is lever number four, and five is your margin right okay how do i maximize yeah, is it fine now not check it Right, you can take a um, snap of it. Please take a snap of it and then uh, you can look at it later. Right, because we're already running behind 30 minutes from our schedule closure. So let me go back. Wait a minute. Yeah. So these are okay, but those who want it again. So these are the summary of the five levers margin. So this is in order of priority. So look at your margins first. Uh, if you have to look at all the levers, look at your margins first, then your conversion, then average ticket rate, number of transactions, and last is lead. If you see lead generation, I've kept in the last, kept in the end. Because, uh, and this is a little bit of dichotomy because whenever I ask somebody, how will you increase your business? Uh, maximum time I hear is, I have to increase my lead generation. I have to focus on my lead generation. But you see in my chart, lead generation is in the end because Lead generation is an activity where you have to spend a lot of money, a lot of resource. You have to hire people, you have to invest in online media, you have to advertise in newspaper, magazine. So it is a very resource oriented activity. There are other four levers before lead generation where you can increase your turnover as well as profit in a much more economical way, which will help you increase your profit. So look at your lead generation only in the end. For example, Bhanu's case, yeah, the business is new. Uh, Manu can look at lead generation because uh, there the the that lever may not be saturated yet. 
but if you are in uh, traditional business if you have been in business for some time look at the other leads other levers first then look at lead generation in the end because in today's time and as well as in normal times also it should be our endeavor it should be our effort to reduce our resources expenditure on uh, lead generation because the more the less we spend on getting customers the more money we make so lead generation is in the end i hope you are able to understand this uh, the next one is <clears throat> so as we caught uh, jim ron so this is the right time jim ron as you know was one of the, uh, the biggest uh, speakers in the world from us as he said that this is uh, and this is very pertinent for this time of the year for this time of the month where all of us are sitting at home it is high time to look at ourselves invest in ourselves look at new things look at learnings look at new ways to do business and how will you uh, learn new ways to do business is to invest in yourself uh, look at uh, many speakers so many webinars are going on attend as many webinars as possible and then you will be able to uh, okay i'll go back to the last slide somebody is taking this is the last slide you mean right so yeah so going ahead uh, please invest this time in spending on uh, learning for you as well as your team because as jim ryan said if you spend our time on a business we can earn a living by which we'll be able to live comfortably but if you invest on yourself you'll be able to scale your business 2x 3x 5x and make a fortune right <clears throat> anybody who knows this guy on the left can anyone tell who is this guy on the left <clears throat> the guy on the left is a famous football coach called pep gordela unfortunately uh, his mother also expired in uh, this coronavirus in spain uh, he is though he, and the, uh, his, he donated 1 million pounds so look at the irony that uh, even he could not save his mother so this is hard times so we know so it is a good time to invest in yourself uh, talk to your people talk to your mentors talk to your friends who have been there who have been successful people uh, successful business people talk to them take advice take suggestions don't go on your own this is uh, you know what we are saying at the current moment because with collective wisdom collective effort everybody will do better and i'm coming almost to the last of my presentation uh, so as tiger woods also said is a noted uh, football uh, this golf player that we can't uh, know where we are in the business because we are in the business most of the time so we need a bird's eye view from somebody else to show things in a proper perspective so talking to a mentor talking to your friend who has been successful will always help you know and as a gesture of you being here i also want uh, to offer my thanks to you and uh, for this i've got a good offer for you uh, the offer is for only today uh, if you feel that i've added value to you you can interact with me on an individual basis you know um, this the this the webinar was uh, for everybody so uh, for and you know, each of your business is different somebody is in a service somebody is in product even in product there will be so many kinds of business so though I have uh, discussed five levers so each business would require its own uh, nuance the business will have its own nuances and we need to tackle business in a more customized solution for that uh, i put up a plan for you an offer for you so two coaching sessions i can offer where i'll give you a customized solution it will be a business one-to-one uh, -one individual session with you only one business at one time because the need of the hour is customized solution the solution that will work for the business so there'll be two sessions uh, or each session for 60 to 90 minutes. In the first session, I'm going to talk about uh, your business. We are going to diagnose your business from all these seven parameters that I talked to you before, which is sales, marketing, finance, HR, uh, operations. From these, all the seven aspects, we're going to audit the business and see where we can improve upon. And after audit, we will do a three months action plan. <clears throat> 
So the, of course, the action plan we need to be implemented. Probably we'll set a time frame of three months or two and a half months or whatever. So in between, maybe after one and a half month or two months, there'll be a need for review, review and course correction. If you have implemented what are the results, uh, if the results are not coming to that extent, maybe we need to fine tune the strategy again, the tactics again. So for that, another session will be required. So these sessions will be either in office, in my office in Calcutta or Delhi. I spend my time between these two uh, cities. So if you are in Delhi or Calcutta, you can do this, the sessions there, or you can do on Zoom also. First session will start uh, immediately. I'll send out a web questionnaire to you and you fill it up and then we begin the first session. We draw your action plan after the, uh, after the business health check and you go ahead. And second, the second session will be as per a mutual discussion, maybe after two months, where you'll have some idea uh, of the activities that you have done and the results that have come from it. So these two sessions, I'm giving a special offer for you. Uh, this is usually my sessions are uh, $75 per session, so $150. So this is a special price for people who are in this webinar. So if you feel you need a customized solution for your business, and if you feel that this webinar has added value and interacting on a person scale uh, will do more, so you can uh, touch base with me. But this is the offer for today only. Uh, after the webinar, you can contact me and I'll give you all the payment details where you can remit your money and we'll get going on that. So thank you so much. These are my contact details. Please, you can note it down. And if you have any queries, you can, uh, if you are interested in the two individual sessions, you can contact me on these numbers. This is my number as well as WhatsApp number. You can mail me. These are my other social media uh, coordinates. This is what I had to talk today. I'm ready to take some questions now. You can chat. Uh, you can type in the chat box if you have any question. I've come to the end of my presentation. If you have any question, you can write it here. For any clarity, any um, uh, you need to go back to any slide, I'm available. So thank you so much once again, everybody. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to me for about close to one and a half hours. And thank you, Sonali, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for such a wonderful and informative session. It was really great. And uh, uh, thank you so much for all to all the attendees for taking out time to attend this session. We hope you were able to add, add some value uh, to your lives through this. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Our next webinar is tomorrow itself. It's about staying positive during this crisis, this difficult time. So if you need any further information about that, please get in touch with me. And as sir said, if you need any further information about the session today, please feel free to contact him or me. I can share the message with him as well. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you once again. You have been a wonderful audience with a lot of participation, which gave me a lot of energy as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone.